What's up team? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Amanda Jane and if you're new here, happy to have you. I am a certified strength and conditioning coach, a certified personal trainer, a certified nutrition coach, all the things. You can read about it later. If you're back, welcome back. Happy to have you. Today, I want to talk about self-care, which is like super buzzwordy these days in 2022. Self-care, we think about going on vacation, relaxing, going to the spa, which might feel like is kind of coming to a close now that we're in fall, we're back to the start of the school year, which means change for some people. And we're kind of done with the whole summer vacation vibes. So it might feel like there is no time for traditional self-care and it's time to get back to the grind, time to get back to work and getting things done, especially before the holiday season comes into full swing, right? So we're grinding away, especially here in New York City, we're all about just getting things done, not worrying about anything else. Is that you? Now I'm curious, do you think of exercise as a form of self-care? Do you think of exercise as a form of self-care or do you think of it as a task on your to-do list as something that you're kind of checking off the to-do list and something that if you don't feel like it gets done, you feel really bad about yourself? How do you feel about exercise and how it relates to self-care? I ask because a lot of the clients that I've worked with started out by thinking of exercise as a task. They felt as though it was something they had to check off the list. There was someone almost pressuring them, whether it was themselves or whether it was their doctor or there was even, you know, this uh, uh, idea that I'm almost pressuring them each week by asking them if they got some of their workouts in. Um, so it felt more like a task rather than self-care. And I, I want us to kind of reframe this. Something that happened when my clients started to reframe this idea that exercise could be viewed as self-care, they really started to see a lot of success in other areas of their life and just so many positive transformations happened for them once we made that mindset shift. So today I want to share with you how self-care maybe can look a little different and how taking care of yourself first can actually positively impact some of these other things that we were talking about, which may be career oriented, finance oriented, um, spending time and taking care of our family, our social life, right? All of that stuff is impacted by how we're feeling, how we're doing. So if we take care of ourselves first, then we can positively impact those other areas of our life. When we take care of ourselves first, we can better take care of other people. So if we have goals for ourselves physically, if we have goals for ourselves in the gym, then exercise is self-care if we're attending to those goals. And then further, if we're succeeding in that, if we're taking the time out of our day to attend to our own personal needs, then we can better show up for other people. Not only do we feel good because we took care of ourselves first, not only do we feel good because we attended to our own needs and goals first, but we also feel good because maybe there's a little bit of some endorphins, it feels good to breathe, it feels good to exercise, right? So exercise is a form of self-care in multiple ways because we're attending to our own. We're attending to our own goals and needs before others and we're just feeling good because we're releasing endorphins and then we're better able to show up at our job, in social situations, um, in certain instances, of our family, right? Being there to support our family and friends. 
So there's so many positive impact to just taking the time to exercise, right? And it also can be just like almost meditative and almost just a time just for you to just be in the gym, listening to your favorite music or listening to your favorite podcast and just doing something just for you. So my client, Brendan, before we started working together, he was so busy at rehearsal, um, just, you know, rehearsing and doing performances and all that stuff. And so he only really thought of that time as exercise. He felt like going to the gym was a waste of time, right? Because he was exercising while at rehearsal. Um, but, but because he was so busy with, with, with rehearsal and getting so much cardio in and, and expending so much energy with um, teaching choreography, and being on his feet all day, he also felt as though he didn't have the time to make a proper meal for himself. So he was always going out and getting fast food, always kind of having some fried food and just like the quick stuff that he could just grab and go. He felt like he didn't have time to hit the gym and spend some time at the gym. And he also felt like it was a waste of time to, to cook meals for himself. After we started working together, he really started to see the value in spending that time every day. Now he works out five days a week for about an hour in the morning before he has all of that other stuff he has to do. And he's been meal prepping because he's been meal prepping and filling himself with really good vegetables and proteins and just nutrient dense, rich food. He has actually more energy so that he's better able to show up at those rehearsals for those dance calls to teach choreography and all of that good stuff. So plus on top of that, he had a goal of wanting to gain weight and gain muscle. So all that energy that he was expending in dance, doing cardio for dance and then fueling on fast food wasn't really working. Now he's actually succeeding in reaching his goals of gaining some muscle mass, gaining some weight and just feeling good overall. So. He's better able to show up for his relationships. He's better able to show up for all of the different shows he's doing. He's better able to teach his choreography and he has so much energy. I also wanna tell you about my client, Isabel, who actually was taking the time to work out, but she was working out in a way that was more so serving other people. She felt as though if she worked out in a bodybuilding style, workout routine that she would be more castable that she would have this certain appearance so she had a lot going on mindset wise with how she was working out how she was eating she was definitely afraid of carbs um, she was definitely concerned about her macronutrients and was limiting a lot of what she was intaking but then she would binge later after a long late shift at work where she was on her feet all day so there was a lot going on in terms of that once we started working together, she had a better grasp of how she should work out for her body. We did um, an injury prevention assessment. We were able to come up with some daily exercises and routines so she could be really in tune with her body, how she should be working out in order to optimally perform as an actor, singer, and dancer. We addressed kind of those myths about what we should and should not be eating and how carbs are not bad at all. So she was able to gain a lot more energy. She was able to kick some of those binging habits because she was feeling more filled and fueled from eating some really nutrient dense, rich food. And then because she was working out for her, she felt as though she was able to be more in tune with what she wanted and she needed and actually took the time on her own to start journaling in the morning, meditating, and some of those other self-care things. She ended up booking an entire season for the summer stock season. And even so what do you guys think? Do you think that exercise is a form of self-care? Do you prioritize self-care in your life? I'm curious what you guys think. Leave a comment below. If you thought this was helpful, I would love for you to tell me. Let me know what's going on. Subscribe, click the notification button, follow me on Instagram at trainwithamandajane for more tips and tricks. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.